Hi, I'm Robert Cole and I'm with New Leaf Cabinets and Counters out of Tacoma, Washington. I'm here today to compare a Chinese cabinet with an American made cabinet. It's no secret that Chinese cabinets are significantly cheaper than American made cabinet and most people generally understand that because the cabinet is less expensive, the quality is also going to be less. But what they don't know is how much less. So that's what we're here today to do. Um, I have here two cabinets. One is a Chinese cabinet that we purchased from our competitors. The other is an American-made cabinet that we sell here in Tacoma. Um, they're very similar cabinets. They're both face frame cabinets. They're both full overlay door styles. They're both shaker cabinets in style. Um, and in general, they're very comparable cabinets. Um, standard size, standard features, uh, exactly what you would expect to incorporate into any kitchen design uh, regardless of style or size. Um, so let's take a look. Um, first and foremost, the very first thing that I notice is that the Chinese cabinet, which is here on the left, um, is plywood construction, while the American-made cabinet on the right is a particle board construction. This is fairly typical of most Chinese manufacturers and most American manufacturers. Chinese manufacturers typically use plywood construction. American manufacturers typically use a particle board, a furniture board, whatever you want to call it, as their standard. Even really high-end American manufacturers are using MDF um, as their standard. Uh, here's a secret as to why. Chinese manufacturers use plywood not because it's a superior product or because it's, it's better or stronger or anything like that. They use, chi uh, Chinese manufacturers use plywood in their construction because their cabinets are shipped over on boats across the ocean. It's no secret that the weakest piece of particle board occurs when it gets wet. If particle board gets wet or soaked or is subjected to a high humidity environment, such as a container ship being shipped across the ocean, it can get damaged pretty significantly. So Chinese manufacturers use plywood for that reason. It gets shipped across the ocean in a hot, humid boat that then gets reassembled here in the United States. So some people may use it as a good thing. Most Chinese manufacturers boast that they have plywood construction, um, but really it's a, it's a logistics issue as to why they use it. American manufacturers lean towards the engineered plywood, such as particle board, MDF, um, because it's easier to work with, it's flatter, it's truer, um, it just provides a tighter fit. So, uh, Moving on to the construction of the cabinets, um, the next most noticeable thing that I notice between the Chinese and the American cabinet is the lack of corner braces or eye braces in the Chinese cabinet. The American cabinet has three eye braces across the top. Um, that helps secure the face frame and the box together. It helps the cabinet maintain its square uh, and generally just provides a more sturdy box. Um, when we moved both of these cabinets in here, um, right away you can tell the difference in construction. Um, the Chinese cabinet felt pretty wobbly. Um, you know, it, it kind of seems like if you, if you look at it wrong, it's going to fall over and break. Whereas the American cabinet felt stout. It felt more like one solid unit. Um, moving on into some of the details of the construction, um, even from the top, um, you can see the dado into the face frame on the Chinese cabinet. Um, number one is almost non-existent. Um, number two, it doesn't fit very well. Uh, it probably the side panel of the cabinet only intersects the face frame at most by about a sixteenth of an inch and there's almost an eighth of an inch of room on each side of that dado whereas the American cabinet the dado is uh, 
approximately a quarter inch deep into the face frame and it's an extremely tight fit from top to bottom. What that means is that your face frame is, is really strongly attached to the box of your cabinet, which is going to prevent warps. Um, it's going to prevent it falling off if you've got kids, dogs, or belongings. Uh, so it's one feature there. Um, another feature that I notice looking around um, is that the Chinese cabinet is using uh, cam locks similar to what you find in IKEA cabinets to secure the back panel to the side panels whereas the American cabinet uses screw uh, pocket screws and glue. Uh, again it's a much neater appearance on the back panel of the cabinet I can see a gap between the back panel and the side panel whereas on the American cabinet it's extremely tight fitting and well constructed. Um, another thing that I notice lacking on the Chinese cabinet is I do not see any evidence of glue anywhere in the uh, construction. I don't see any evidence of glue uh, between the face frame and the side panel, nor between the back panel and the side panel. The American cabinet, um, I can see evidence of glue in a few places, um, which generally indicates that it's going to last longer because not only is it screwed together, it's glued together as well. Moving on to the drawers. Um, other than the Chinese cabinet having a slab front and the American cabinet having a five piece, can't really count that as apples to apples because maybe a five piece is available in the Chinese cabinets as well. But let's take a look at the drawer boxes. Um, opening up the cabinets, uh, they both are soft closing. The Chinese doesn't sound quite as smooth, but they, they both do soft close, self close. Um, they are both dovetailed. They both appear to be a solid wood box. Um, however, one detail that I noticed right away is the difference in the quality of the dovetails. The dovetail on the American cabinet is extremely close, extremely tight looks like it was done by a professional. The dovetail on the Chinese cabinet is rough. Um, it feels or appears as if it were kind of banged together and there's actually staples uh, holding the dovetails together. Now if a dovetail joint is meant to be a strong joint you shouldn't need staples to hold it together. Um, Let's take a look at the undersides. So pretty similar features on the bottom here. Um, the biggest difference that I see is that on the American cabinet, they do have an additional cross beam going across the bottom plate of the drawer box, whereas the Chinese cabinet does not. Um, it also doesn't appear as if the very back panel is actually recessed into the cabinet. Um, but overall they're similar similar in construction, similar in size. The hardware is roughly the same. This is Bloom hardware so it's got a name brand on it. The Chinese cabinet um, Similar in function, it's got some adjustability there as well. Um, so I would say that it's comparable 
But in the operation of the drawers, the American cabinet with the Bloom hardware does feel a little bit smoother. Most likely it's rated uh, for an additional amount of weight. I know that the Bloom hardware that's used on these cabinets specifically um, supports up to 94 pounds um, in the drawer box. I have no idea what the Chinese hardware does or does not uh, support. So the next thing that we want to look at is the finish of the cabinets. Often, obviously this is a painted cabinet in the, uh, on the American side. The Chinese cabinet is a, is a stained finish. So not really comparing apples to apples there. Um, but one thing that you do want to look at as a consumer before you choose your uh, final cabinets is take a look at the finish. Um, generally speaking, a higher quality finish is going to appear to be more deep. It's going to have a, a, a good sheen to it. Um, this stuff just kind of appears uh, thin. Um, it's hard to describe, but it, it just, in my opinion, as a cabinet professional, it looks slightly cheaper. Um, another big difference you can see in some of the door panels, you can see the variation in color, which is probably because that fit of the panel isn't very good and it just wasn't uh, a quality construction. Another thing that's important to evaluate before you make your final decision on where to buy your cabinets and what type of cabinets to buy is to evaluate not only what you can see, but what you can't see. And what I mean by that is your dealer service and your factory warranty. All cabinets that we sell here at New Leaf come with a limited lifetime warranty. Obviously there's limitations to that warranty, but we do expect that cabinet to last the lifetime of your home. Chinese cabinets, I don't sell them, so I don't know what their warranty is. Most of the warranties that I've seen with a Chinese cabinet is a very definitive period of time such as one, three, or five years. Uh, it's been my experience, not just in cabinets, but in life in general, that you can expect things to outlast their warranty, but probably not by much. Uh, so when you're buying cabinets, you probably want to think about how long you're going to want to keep those cabinets in and how long it will be until you remodel your kitchen again. Another point is the customer service. Whatever service you get in the initial design consultation, the initial cabinet order, is the exact same quality of service that you can expect when your cabinets are installed and when you need service from them, whether you have a factory defect, a problem, or maybe you damage them. So that's something to keep in mind during your cabinet purchasing experience. Are you satisfied with the service that you get from your dealer? If not, you're probably not going to be satisfied with your cabinet purchase. To review, we have two cabinets, one Chinese, one American. The American cabinet is clearly superior in almost every aspect um, except for the price. But it's a lifetime cabinet versus a, in my opinion, a temporary cabinet. So that's one thing to keep in mind as you go forward. Feel free to check us out online at nlcabinets.com. This is Robert with New Leaf Cabinets. Hasta la vista.